How do you vet a new vendor? How do you know if it is safe to invite another business into yours, to invite them into your professional life, to invite them to engage with your clients. In many ways, working with a new vendor is like going on a first date. It can go really well or it can be really awful. And so today we are gonna talk about how you can vet potential new vendors to make sure that they are a right fit for you and for your clients. Hello, my friends, welcome back. My name is Andrea Eppolito, and we are here today celebrating life, luxury, and above all else, love. If you are new to the channel and you are a lover of all things weddings, events, lifestyle, business, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad that you found us and I would love to have you subscribe. If you are a follower and you have been with me for years, thank you for being a part of my community. Thank you for giving me the honor and the privilege of inviting me into your business and your life. And I hope to give you some great information today about vendors. So I have said, I don't, I don't make anything. I, I don't make bouquets. I don't I don't take pictures. I don't cook food. I don't serve food. I don't set the table. My job is as as a visionary, as a designer, as an artist is to find the right vendor, the right creative at the right time and put them with the right client so that we can bring forth something that didn't exist before. And when you see that wedding planners work with the same people over and over again. Yes, we do. Now, why do we do that? It's because we have a level of trust. We have a shorthand. There's this dance that perfects over time in terms of how we move around each other in a space, how we communicate what they expect from me, what I expect from them. And yet today, one of the things that we're finding as we recover from COVID and we move into a much more dynamic industry is the fact that many of us are being tasked with working with new teams. This could be because your go-to photographer isn't available. It could be because your go-to venue is booked. There could be a million reasons. Hopefully it's also because you as a professional, you as an artist, you as a designer are looking at the world and understanding that it's changed and that there are things that we can do that are new. You want to shake up and revitalize your own business. And maybe somebody has caught your eye on the internet. Maybe you've seen something that you're like, that's, that's cool. That's interesting. I, I want to change that or I want to do that. But how do you know if it's safe? How do you know if the thing you're seeing is real and is legitimate? So we're going to talk about that today. The first thing that I do is I go through if I'm looking for a new vendor, there could be a million ways that I've come across them. Instagram, client, referral, magazine. But the first thing that I do is I go to their website because the website is the only thing that you as a business, that you as a creative, that you truly own. You don't own Instagram. You don't own YouTube. You don't own a magazine. And so your website is yours. And I want to see is this business, it, are they buttoned up? Are they clean? Are they sharp? Are they blogging? Do they take ownership? Do they have things like policies, usage, privacy? It seems silly, right? Like it seems silly that I as a wedding planner care about whether or not the rental company has a copyright on their website. But if you as a vendor are not taking care of your business, if you're not paying attention, to the thing that you own, which is the thing you should care about, then you will never take care of my business. And so that is the first thing I do. I go through their website. I want to make sure that I am working with somebody who is business-minded enough, who understands the world enough, and who cares enough to manage and maintain the thing that they have and that they can. The second thing that I do is I go to their social. Now, yes, I'm looking at their social feed and I want to see how is it curated? How is it tagged? Where are they giving credit? What are they saying? A caption on social is not just for a bride or a groom. It's not just for a corporation. In a very, very real way, if you're a vendor and you're creative, the caption, I want it to speak to me. And so if you're a planner or you're a venue and you're looking to see whether or not somebody is potentially a good fit for your business, don't just look at the pictures. Read the captions in their social. 
what are they saying? How do they feel? What are they talking about? When, I mean, this is, they have a captive audience. They're speaking to the void. When they could say anything, what are they saying? Does their vision align with yours? Do they communicate the same way? Number three is on the same social, on their Instagram. I don't look at what they've posted. I look at what they've been tagged in. So are they being tagged by the brides and grooms? Is the end user, is my client excited about them to the point where they're tagging them in their images? That says a lot. I want to know what other professionals are tagging them in the images. I want to see are magazines sharing their work? Are blogs sharing their work? Are they being featured? Are venues tagging them? Because if they have a community of professionals that like them, that respect them, and that are willing to share their work, then there's a very good chance that I will feel the same way if I respect the people and the brands that are supporting this particular vendor. And then I go through and I look who have who do we both know so it's it's really hard to break into my particular circle if nobody knows you like if i can't go to somebody and say hey have have you worked with this rental company or hey have have you been somewhere with this videographer have you met them at a WIPA event have you met them at engage do they participate in the not like if we don't know any of the same people that's a red flag for me so i want to see who do we know and then I go to somebody that I can trust and I say, I'm debating working with this person. And I see they're in your market. I see you've tagged them. Can you tell me what your experience was? And I really want, I want the bad and I want the great. Like I want, I wish they didn't do this, but I love that they do that. Because your deal breaker could really be no big deal for me. Or something that doesn't bother you can grate on my skin and like make me lose my mind. So I want to hear all of it. And I do this three or four times with three or four different professionals so that I can have a really good understanding of what I may or may not be stepping into. And then the fifth and final thing that I do when I'm starting to vet a vendor is I look for education, which may or may not seem silly, but I want to know is this particular person invested in being educated? Are they attending conferences? Are they speaking at conferences? Are they posting about Netflix? Which, I mean, I like, I love. But are they also posting about books? Are they talking about things that they've read, things that they've seen? Are they sharing who they are as a business? Are they, are they taking me behind the scenes and reinforcing to me that yes, their business may be five, 10, 15 years old, but there is always something new to learn because somebody who's invested in education is invested in growth, is invested in getting better, they will be invested in making me better because they will come to the table with a whole kind of arsenal of information that's only gonna better me and the rest of the team. So once I go through that, once I look at their website, once I read their social captions, once I look at who it is that they've worked with that is excited to tag them, once I get actual references from other people that I know and trust, and once I see whether or not they're educated, then I will make a decision about whether or not I want to go to the next level. And the next level for me is never just booking, but it's always a conversation. And that conversation is really, really very simple. It's, this is who I am, this is how I work, this is what I require from my teams and from my partners. Does this interest you? I always give the vendor the freedom and the opportunity to walk away and say, I don't like that work, I don't do that work, I don't like those constraints, or to share with me, I'd love that, I love this, but this is how I work, can we work together? And if we can, then we try it. Sometimes if I'm available, I will ask if I could go and like pop in on them and watch them work or watch them do something. But a lot of times my vendors are coming in from out of state. I don't always have the opportunity to do that. But what I do have and what I'm required to do is to research, to develop an idea of who they are, to test it 
with other wedding planners and then to take a shot because all of this is risky but you never know, you might be really wildly surprised because some of my favorite vendors started out as new ones. So I hope that that helps you as we move forward. There's gonna be a lot of team shakeups. We're gonna see a lot of new people coming together and I'm excited about the prospect. I'm excited about the energy that we're all gonna to bring to each other and to the work. And so until next time, celebrating life, luxury, and above all else love, I am Andrea Eppolito. If you have any questions, about vetting vendors. If you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments below. I am always engaged there. I always try to read, respond, get back to as many of you as I can because this channel exists for you. And I'm super excited to answer all of your questions again next week. I'll talk to you soon.